And my name is Mr. Hetman. I'm here at Lincoln Technical Institute in Mawa, New Jersey. And today we're going to be talking about the Fluke 115 digital multimeter and all of its featured benefits. Okay, so we're talking about the Fluke 115 here. And this is a true uh, RMS multimeter. RMS meaning for uh, AC voltage. So the first thing obviously you can see is the off position. So being this is a digital multimeter, this is also an auto ranging meter. Auto ranging meaning we don't have to do anything. The meter itself will do all the thinking for us unless we need to do something specialized. So in the first one here, we're going to turn it over to AC volts. AC volts has this little line right here. It looks like a raised eyebrow. And the beauty about this is we can check AC voltage. Okay, so what we're going to do here, remember this can do this meter can do AC voltage. So we put it on the first meter part, and the dial here says V with a raised eyebrow on there. And we can check household current or alternating current. We put the leads into the outlet, and you'll be able to read the current that's going into this outlet over here, which it says 100, between 119 and 120 volts. Okay, so in the AC voltage, we also have right here, it says the small and yellow HZ, which stands for Hertz. So in order for us to have that work, what we would do, you can see up here in the uh, corner, it says AC voltage over here. Now if we hit this yellow button, it will turn it to Hertz, and you can see the HZ down here in the bottom. So that's your first function with it for AC voltage. AC voltage is the raised eyebrow. The next setting is for DC voltage. Direct current. Direct current is 99% of the car. What we have going on here, it looks like a half a roadway. If you look right here, you can see it has a line and three dashes underneath it. Direct current voltage is 99% of the time used for the automobile industry. The yellow button does not have any function in this setting. Next, we have millivolts. Now, millivolts, the first setting on millivolts, when you see it, you look over here on the right-hand side, you'll see it says the small MV, and then it has AC voltage here on the corner, standing for alternating current. If we need to use it for direct current, we would hit the yellow button and it would go immediately to DC voltage. You can see it goes here, so that would be for the automobile and the other one would be for AC voltage. Next one is down here, it looks like the horseshoe, it's the omega sign for ohms. Ohms meaning resistance. This is used up here, we have it, you can see when you set it to ohms, it's auto ranging. So the first thing it does, you got that capital M over here in the corner, and that stands for mega ohms. If we were to hit the button again, the range button, you can see it still says mega ohms, but now on the bottom here it says manual. It's no longer an auto ranging meter. You're doing the thinking for it, it's not thinking for you. The next one, when we hit the range button, you can see it's plain ohms. There's nothing over here in the corner. That is just an ordinary ohms, and again on the bottom here, you'll see where it says manual range. If we hit it again, the range button, you can see it's got a small K over here for kilo ohms. Again, that's for manual ranging, but the perfect setup is auto ranging. Next, we're gonna do ohms. And what we do with ohms, if we take the two leads can you see, and we touch them together, you can see over here, it goes all the way over to 0 0.1. If we take it over here, the way it would work here, and it doesn't matter which way the colors go on this, it's not sensitive. If we go across here, you can see that this is 357.5 ohms. So we would use that for testing any type of solid state circuitry or if we need to test a, a motor or anything else other components in the car if we hit the range button the same thing happens with this one it keeps changing the ohms but we want to leave it on auto ranging because that's our best feature we don't have to do any of the thinking and we don't make no mistakes i've seen a lot of times 
out in the field where guys were fiddling around with this range button and they condemned something that was good or they said something was good that was actually bad because they had it in manual instead of auto ranging. The next setting is continuity. And continuity is strictly for that, for checking continuity. It has no function at all. It's not an accurate ohm meter. It's strictly for continuity. So if we take these two leads and we touch them and we touch them together, it makes an audible sound. That's basically all it's for. Like up or up under the dashboard working on a car, we need to find out if two wires are good and they're actually passing through. We would just touch these two leads and it gives you an audible sound. The next setting down here is for testing solid state circuitry. As you can see when you first set it on here, it says DC volts on the one side and over here you can see where it has a diode. But the diode is the white image down here and that's for checking diodes. If we hit the yellow button, you can see the symbol down here is for capacitors and you can see over here it should say up here in the corner nanofarads the F the capital F meaning farad. The next, next what we have here is the diode checker for testing solid state circuitry on, on a board and we have the red lead and the black lead obviously positive and negative and what this is right now these leads have voltage going through them so what we would do we would take this diode right here diode number 20 and we would check it and put the red lead on one side and a black lead on the other side and as you can see here on the board it should say almost a half a volt it takes to turn it on if we reverse the leads it should turn around and read ol because that would mean that the diode is working properly as in, as you can see it says ol if we were to get a reading on both sides of the diode or an ol on both sides of the diode that would mean that the diode is no longer any good. If we hit the yellow button, we can test the capacitor. That's what this little guy is right here, solid state circuitry capacitor. And we would do the same thing. And you can see that the capacitor is working fine. It's holding a little bit of voltage. Capacitors hold and store voltage temporarily. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is AC amperage. As you can see on here, it says lead. We have to take the lead out of the V-jack, which is for voltage. We take the red lead out of the V-jack and we move it over to the A-jack for amperage. And we can test amperage. Remember, we test amperage in series, in line. Then the next one, then we hit the yellow button here and we can check the uh, hertz on amperage, how much is going on there. The next one, is DC amperage. The same thing, it has to stay into the A jack for amperage, and we check that also in series. Now the way this works is the voltage is going to go through, the, through this lead, and it's going to travel through the red wire, and go up, go through the meter, and read up here amperage, and then the voltage is going to come back out and go out the black lead. And I'll show you here with this board how this works. We can take anything off. Remember, this has to be done in series, not in parallel. If it's in parallel, you'll blow the meter fuse. It has to be done in series. Series meaning in one path for current to flow. So if we take off the power here, we take the power off, and we take the red lead, and we put it in the positive, and we take the black lead and put it over here, and you'll see the lights come on, and you'll see how much amperage we have going through this circuit. And you can see right here, it has that much amperage going through it. The beauty of these fluke meters is they're auto ranging, but they also tell you if you have things hooked up backwards, whether it's voltage or amperage. If we take the leads and we were to reverse them, all it would tell you if you had a circuit that had all the same color wires, you can see over here, you can see the negative. And what that does is that'll tell you that the leads are hooked up backwards. And we can take and hook this amperage up in any part of a circuit as long as it's in series. We can take this wire off of here 
and we can connect it right from here to here and you can see how much those two bulbs take. Up here on the top of the uh, display we have a hold button, we have a min max, we have a range, we have the yellow button which turns all this into more of the multimeter and then of course we have here we have the light in case you're in a dark area and you can't see the digital display. We're going to show the hold feature that you see right over here, the blue button. And what that is, that's in case you're doing something up underneath the dashboard of a car or you're trying to see something and you want to hold on to it so you don't walk back to the shop manual and forget what you did. So if you put your lead in, I'll just use this reel here, this shows it's 12 volts, 12.2 volt volts. We hit the hold button and we take it off and you can see it displays the hold right now. Okay, the next feature is the min-max. And the min-max is based on time and voltage and the average. So it'll show the minimum voltage, the maximum voltage, and the average based on the time. So I'll show you how that works here. We'll place this in here. And you can see when we hit the min-max button here, we turn it off, we turn it back on, and you take the leads off, it shows you 12.2 volts, and it shows that, and then it shows roughly the average, and that was based on the time I had it turned on and off. All right, the next feature we're gonna do over here is the range. As you can see on here, it shows 12.2 volts, and it's auto ranging. If you look down here in the bottom, you can see where it says auto. If we hit this button right here, you can see now it says manual on the bottom, but it still says 12.20. If we hit the range button again, you can see it says manual, but now we're only at 12.2. It changes its digits. And if we hit the button again, it can't even read it because it's so far out. And if we hit it again, it goes back to 12.2 volts. Okay, with a Fluke 115 meter, the first thing we need to do if we're going to do any type of testing in the automobile industry, we need to check and make sure that the fuse is good. So the way we can check and see if the fuse internally is good, we switch this over to ohms over here, and we take the red lead and we place it over into the amp jack and we see what's going on here. And if anything but OL means that it's good fuse. If it reads OL, that means you must take the meter and take the back off right here and then pop this out and there's a fuse internally. It's a 10 amp slow blow fuse. Okay, so in conclusion, um, this digital volt ohm meter, DVOM, will be your best friend out in the field because it is a does so many multiple different things. That's why they call it a digital multimeter. Um, don't forget that this also has a timer. So if we forget to turn it off, don't worry about the nine volt battery behind it because after 20 minutes of non-use, it will shut itself off. If you have any questions about this fluke, you can call the school here at 201-529-1414, or you can reference this video often as you'd like. Thank you.